hi good good morning everyone at the outset would like to thanks vijay and uh, ashay for giving me this opportunity so basically my present uh, topic of presentation is extensive disease small cell lung cancer selection of immunotherapy now uh, i'll just uh, briefly outline what will be my i mean how my flow of presentation is first of all we need to know what's the rationale for choosing immunotherapy in the treatment of extensive stage sclc then what are the selection of immunotherapy options for treatment naive and then selection of therapeutic options for relapse so what is the rationale so we all know high grade neuroendocrine carcinomas have a high metastatic potential they almost accounts for around 13% of lung cancer in the united states even you know they are not like when we see that nsclc is a oncogenic addicted tumor but small cell lung cancers are not like that they are the most common genetic alterations is p53 and rb1 inactivation so we know that the first line treatment for metastatic disease has been combination of platinum plus uh, etoposide or arinotecan and response rates are around 50 to 70% but substantially lower than uh, what we expected and if we see the evolution of systemic therapy in small cell lung cancer so in 1970s we used to be alkylating agents then in 80s came the combination of anthracycline based chemotherapy and in 90s it's platinum based and now in today's era it's mostly checkpoint inhibitors so as nikhil already told the historic standard of care for extensive stage uh, sclc is basically platinum plus etoposide chemotherapy we have this phase 3 study where even though they are initially responses to the chemotherapy and response is also rapid and dramatic almost the overall response rate is around 61% however the responses are really transient we can see the median pf is around 4.1 uh, 4.3 months whereas the median os is around 8.6 months now coming to uh, original topic how self antigens can become tumor antigens so cancer cell may possess genetic alterations or perform post translational uh, tra uh, post translational modifications that can generate new antigens which may be recognized by the immune system so you can very well see in this uh, uh, slide there is a tumor cells there is mutation and then post uh, translational modification which can generate many new antigens which are which could be recognized by the immune system and can be a target so if you see the uh, tumor but uh, tumor mutational burden of different cancers you can see in small cell lung cancer the tumor mutation burden is high is almost 7.37 mutation per mb so the rationale to combine this ici with chemotherapy in S, uh, sclc is first of all chemotherapy induces tumor cell killing may induce tumor antigen release and exposure to immune system whereas the pdl1 overexpression leads to immune cell evasion and t cell inhibition now what does this pd1 and pdl1 inhibition does the pd1 pdl1 inhibition restores the tumor specific t cell immunity and it also causes a reversal of immune suppression which leads to deeper more durable systemic anti tumor response so that is the main rationale now coming to the selection of immunotherapy options for treatment naive extensive stage sclc so this is again the slide which shows the evolution of immunotherapy in small cell lung cancer so way back i mean in 2015 initial trial they uh, suggested ipilimumab plus chemotherapy in extensive stage as a first line that is a phase 3 trial then we have checkmate 032 as a phase 2 trial in second line then pembrolizumab maintained as a first line maintained in june 2017 and then comes this empower 133 and caspian which are the phase 3 trials of first line uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors in small cell lung cancer then in october 2018 we have uh, checkmate 451 that is nimolumab with or without ipilimumab in first line maintenance and again in may 2020 we have two more trials that is addition of nivolumab plus chemotherapy and keynote 604 that is addition of uh, pembrolizumab plus chemotherapy so these are the phase 3 trials the addition of anti pdl1 checkpoint inhibitors to first line platinum plus etoposide in extensive stage so you can see this ampar 133 so the patients have been uh, who have measurable extensive stage sclc with ecog performance status 0 to 1 with no prior systemic therapy and uh, asymptomatic brain metastasis has been randomized into uh, arm 1 with atezolizumab plus carbotetoposide and arm 2 is placebo plus carbotetoposide patients received induction therapy for four uh, cycles every uh, three weekly followed by maintenance atezo in one uh, in arm a and placebo in arm b until disease progression the primary endpoint of this uh, of this trial is uh, overall survival and pfs by investigator whether secondary endpoints are overall response rate duration of uh, uh, response and safety similarly the caspian trial again it's a phase 3 trial of addition of uh, durvalumab plus tremelumab plus etoposide cisplatin every 3 weekly for four cycles this is arm 1 whereas arm 2 they have given durvalumab alone with etoposide and arm 3 is only etoposide cisplatin 
followed by maintenance durvalumab plus pemelumab uh, every four weekly until progression in arm a arm b it is durvalumab alone every four weekly until progression and arm uh, c that is only chemotherapy arm there is optional pca so again the primary endpoint of this trial is overall survival whereas the secondary endpoint is pfs overall response rate safety tolerability so if we see the empower 133 os data so after addition of uh, atezolizumab to uh, uh, ep regimen you can see the median os is 12.3 months as compared to 10.3 in placebo arm with a hazard ratio of 0.76 and even though not that significant p value but definitely there is a improvement similarly if they see the caspian trial the 3 year os data again in patients who received durvalumab plus uh, chemotherapy the median os is 12.9 months as compared to 10.5 months in those patient who just received chemotherapy with hazard ratio of 0.75 so Uh, again, addition of anti-PD-1 checkpoint inhibitors to first-line platinum plus etoposide. So these are the other two phase three trials where adding pembrolizumab to chemotherapy definitely improved OS. That is 10.8 months versus 9.7 months with hazard ratio of 0.80 and EA5161, which is addition of nivolumab to chemotherapy. Again, the you can see the median OS is yeah, 11.3 months as compared to 8.5 months with hazard ratio of 0.67. So. if we see the summary of these four important trials all these are uh, these phase three trials where you can see that the overall response rate is almost to the tune of 60 uh, 65% 65 to 70% whereas the median pf is in the range of 5 to 6 months and the uh, median os is in the range of 12 uh, 11 to 12 months so the frontline chemoimmunotherapy in sclg summary of efficacy you can again see in uh, empower 133 the median pf is 5.2 months os 12.3 months 12 months os is almost 52% with 24 month os around 20% similarly in caspian with durvalumab alone again the 12 month os percent is around 52.8 whereas the 24 month os percent is around 22.2 months uh, with addition like uh, dual durvalumab plus temelumab there's they didn't get a a uh, good OS overall survival benefit in caspian trial whereas keynote again 45% and ea5161 uh, around 48% was the over 12 month overall response uh, overall survival rate so to summarize the first line combination in checkpoint inhibitors plus chemotherapy it significantly improves survival in advanced sclc atezolizumab in combination with carbotoposide and durva in combination with carbotoposide or cis etopos approved by fda and positive results with nivolumab and pembrolizumab in combination with platinum etoposide in phase 2 aa5161 and phase 3 keynote 604 study respectively corroborate original findings with atezoli and durvalumab safety outcomes consistent with known safety profile of each agent and immune checkpoint inhibition plus chemotherapy is new standard of care for the first line treatment of uh, extensive stage small cell lung cancer now coming to the first line maintenance immunotherapy again the checkmate 451 which is addition of nivolumab plus ipilimumab versus nivolumab versus placebo as a maintenance therapy for extensive stage small cell lung cancer again this is a randomized phase 3 maintenance trial where patient with extensive stage sclc and ongoing response or uh, stable disease following first line platinum based chemotherapy with no symptomatic uh, cns metastasis were randomized in arm 1 as nivolumab 1 mg per kg every 3 weekly with ipilimumab 3 mg per kg for maximum 4 dose followed by nivolumab maintenance arm 2 is only nivolumab every 2 weekly 240 mg and arm 3 is placebo and the patient will continue to receive this until progressive disease on an acceptable toxicity the primary endpoint of this trial is os with nivolumab plus ipilimumab versus placebo and secondary uh, endpoint is pfs with nivolumab plus ipilimumab versus placebo and pfs and os with uh, nivolumab versus placebo so they basically is the three uh, three arm trial and apart from that the exploratory endpoints are overall response rate duration of response safety and tolerability so you can see the uh, kaplan meier survival curves os with maintenance nivolumab plus ipilimumab versus placebo so there is no definite benefit you can see the median os is around 9.2 months with uh, nivo plus ipilimumab versus placebo of 9.6 months similarly there is no improvement in overall survival in nivo plus ipilu as well as uh, nivolumab alone and there's no improvement in pfs in nivolumab plus ipilimumab as well as nivolumab alone so again there's another maintenance pembrolizumab in patient with extensive stage sclc which is again a phase 2 study even this trial suggests that maintenance pembrolizumab did not improve the median pfs compared with that of historical controls pfs and os rate of 13% and 
uh, 37% respect rate one year after patients began receiving pembrolizumab suggests that a drug did benefit a subset of patients. But then again, this is a phase two study and we can uh, cannot uh, actually rely, uh, I mean, have some concluded evidence. Coming to the second line therapy, Checkmate 331, that is second line nivolumab in relapsed small cell lung cancer, which is again a randomized open level phase three trial. Patient with relapse after first line platinum based chemotherapy were randomized in 1 is to 1 with nivolumab 250, uh, 240 mg every two weeks or chemotherapy that is either topotecan or amrubicin until progression. The primary endpoint is overall survival. You can see the median OS is 7.5 versus 8.4 months, whereas the hazard ratio is 0.86 and median PF is 1.4 versus 3.8 months. The objective response rate is around 13.7% versus 16.5 and adverse event is 13.8 uh, versus 73.2. So, Again, you know, uh, this, uh, uh, this second line nivolumab in patients with relapsed progressive SCLC randomized open level phase 3 trial where uh, the same primary endpoint of OS, you can see the survival curves, there is no definite improvement in either PFS or OS. So, uh, nivolumab didn't uh, benefit in uh, patients who received chemotherapy versus nivolumab. So, nivolumab monotherapy and nivolumab plus ipilimumab in recurrent SCLC, again, overall response rate was higher with nivolumab plus ipilimumab versus nivolumab and OS was similar between groups. So, in short, there is no per se benefit of adding these immune checkpoint inhibitors in second line, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in relapse setting or in second line. The checkmate 032, that is third line nivolumab monotherapy in recurrent SCLC, again, <coughs> there is a... Uh, you know, 109 patients are included and who are relapsed after two prior lines of therapy with a median follow of 28.3 months. The overall response rate was around 12, 11.9 uh, percentage, whereas the median duration of response is around 17.9 percent. So these are the basically maintenance first line and uh, upfront uh, date of immune checkpoint inhibitors. Thank you. I'm sorry I've overshooted the time. Thank you, Dr. Amun. Thank you for that presentation. Yeah, appreciate it.